What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today's video is going to be a special one. I get tons of DMs all the time from people hitting me up and saying they want to start Shopify dropshipping but they don't really know where to start. So in this video I'm going to go over all the steps that you need to take if you want to start a Shopify dropshipping store. If you've seen any of my previous videos then you know that they're all 0% fluff and 100% value. So without further ado, let's hop right into the value. Okay, so basically the point of this video is just to compile a complete list of the steps that you need to take as a beginner. Now, I'm not gonna go super in depth on every single one of these steps, just because they'd be kind of dumb because I have videos on my YouTube channel going through all of these steps in depth. And if I did that again, then this video will probably be about four hours long. So um, neither of us want that. So if you do wanna learn more in depth about all the steps that I'm gonna be talking about, then you can just look in the description of this video and I'm gonna compile a complete list of all the videos that I've made that go along with this presentation. So without further ado, Let's get into it. So because this is the complete beginner's guide, I feel like we gotta start from the beginning. So let's talk quickly about what dropshipping is. Dropshipping is basically where you act like the middleman because you're selling someone's product to a customer. Usually that means that you're gonna have an online store and when people buy from you, they expect you to ship a product to them. Now you are not shipping a product to them you are going to turn around and order that exact same product from a different website and then that different website is going to ship it to them. Usually that different website is AliExpress, which is a Chinese e-commerce brand, which is basically like the Amazon for Chinese people. Um, the advantage to using AliExpress is that they have really cheap products. Because they have really cheap products, you can mark them up. So you can get a $10 product on AliExpress and then sell it to people for $30. You make $20 and um, that's drop shipping. If you don't know what Shopify is, Shopify is basically an e-commerce platform that almost every dropshipper uses to build their website on and just sell on essentially. So I think it's really important to decide if you should actually start dropshipping before you go learning a bunch about it. So um, that, that answer really depends. Um, if you're serious about starting a business and you realize that this is not a get rich quick scheme, then it may be a good idea to start dropshipping. But there are a lot of sacrifices that you need to make. This is again, not a get rich quick scheme. It is a legitimate business and you really gotta treat it like one. That means you really have to work extremely hard, especially when you're starting out. One of the great things about Shopify dropshipping is that it's, it's a lot of work at first and then it kind of gradually goes downhill once you start to figure out what you're doing. You also need money to invest in starting a Shopify dropshipping store. And I would recommend a minimum of $300. All right, so now let's get into the first steps when you wanna start a Shopify dropshipping store. Now, the number one thing that you need to do when you are interested in Shopify dropshipping is do a ton of research, but there is a wrong and a right way to do this. When I first started, I did a ton of research, but I did it from a ton of different sources. For example, I was looking at blogs, I was looking at a dozen different YouTubers, I was looking left and right and all these different places for information. Now, I really recommend that you just find one or two, maybe three Shopify YouTubers that are just good, you know? I recommend Tanner Plains, Hayden Bulls, myself, obviously. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there. So I just recommend that you binge watch almost all their videos or at least ones that you can see value out of. Now, I really, 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 really recommend that you take notes because you just can't remember all of that information. So um, just take notes and really just try to figure out the whole process and figure out the process that you wanna take. Because there's a million different ways to do Shopify dropshipping and you really need to have your own game plan, I guess you could say. Now, an alternative to watching a ton of YouTube videos is to buy a course. Now, courses aren't always recommended, but um, if you are starting out and you do have a lot of money to play with, then courses can be good because it just lays out all the information for you 
and you can go through and watch all the videos bam 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 they're all in order it's it goes from beginner to expert with most courses so um it can be it can be really good if you have the budget while you're doing your research, I really recommend that you focus on one ad platform. I was talking earlier about a game plan and your game plan needs to have one advertising platform. For example, if you just want to do Facebook ads, then don't bother watching videos about Instagram influencers or Google ads or any of that stuff. The second thing that you need to do when you want to start a Shopify dropshipping store is product research. Now, I really, really recommend that you follow the data and what that means is that you sell products that other dropshippers are already selling. Now, you may think that that's just gonna cause you to fail because it's not unique and other people are selling it and it's saturated, all this stuff, that's not true. Um, as long as a product is working, then there's a demand for it and there's people buying it and there's no reason why you can't sell the exact same product to the same people or different people. Just don't reinvent the wheel when it comes to product research. The next thing that you need to do is build your blueprint. You need to find five to 10 products that you're going to test. Now, the reason you need five or 10 products is because you're almost guaranteed to lose money the first few products that you test. And the more products that you test, the higher your chances of success are. Other things that you need in your blueprint or game plan, as I was calling it earlier, is how you're gonna advertise. So I would either recommend Instagram influencers or Facebook ads, depending on your budget. This is also the time where you should decide what your store is gonna be called and other information that go along with the company that you wanna build. The next step is to start building your Shopify store. I highly recommend that you use my 14 day free trial link that's in the description of this video. From there, you're gonna be able to build your store for absolutely free. Now, I highly recommend that you don't overcomplicate this because clean and basic stores do a lot better for me than the ones that I've really, really put some time and effort in. And that's kind of depressing, but um, you know, it's just how life goes. So um, like I said, just don't overcomplicate it and just build a basic store. I recommend just using the default thing that Shopify gives you and just customizing it a little bit. The next thing that you need to do is get your branding materials. So that means getting a domain name, which is really cheap. You can get them from Namecheap or from GoDaddy or from $100 websites. You also need to get a company Gmail. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need like a customized one. So it says like support, at your website.com you can just use a gmail when you're first starting out additionally you need to make your social media profiles like your instagram and your facebook so the next step is preparing to advertise obviously this step depends on how you're going to advertise but if you are using instagram influencers then this step basically means that you want to contact as many influencers as possible just build a big list of all them, all their prices, stuff like that. That way you're ready to go when you wanna start advertising. Another part of this step is making three video ads for the first product that you're gonna test. Now the reason why you need three video ads may seem a bit unnecessary, but it's really not. It, again, it just increases your chance of finding a winner. I also recommend that you make two to three ad copies to again, just increase your chance of finding a winner. You're gonna find that in Shopify dropshipping, the people that test more are the people that make more. Another part of preparing to advertise is starting to post on your company's social media. That way you just have some credibility. You look like a real company. One additional thing that you should do when preparing to advertise is to get people looking at your store. You can post your store on Facebook groups and ask people what they would change. You can also DM me on Instagram and I'll take a look at your store and let you know what you should fix. So the last step to starting Shopify dropshipping is to start advertising. Now this is really the fun part. Um, it may not be fun because you're gonna lose some money at first, but um, once you figure out what you're doing, this is where you're gonna make your money. All right, so like I said, I'm not gonna go super in depth on how to do every single step, but I am gonna provide you with some tips that you need to know as a beginner. So 
If you're going to be using Instagram influencers, then I highly recommend that right off the bat, you just stick to accounts between 100,000 and 400,000 followers. That way you're not spending too much money just to test a product and you're also not using an influencer that's too small that's probably not going to get you results. So like I said, the people that test more make more and this is kind of why you need a bigger budget. But I highly recommend that you test at least three videos, at least eight influencers and at least two ad copies per product that you're going to test. Most people give up too early and they'll literally have a winning product that someone else is making six figures with and they just can't make any money and that's usually just because they're not testing enough and they give up too early once they go in the red. So when you're deciding what type of influencer ad you want to run, I highly recommend that you use a feed post. Those do best for me. There's two types of feed posts. There's either a link in bio post where the influencer posts a link to your website in the bio and then they tell people to go there from the ad. You can also do an app post, which is where an influencer links your page on the ad and then people go to your page and visit your website. That may seem a little complicated at first, but I promise it's really not. So in my personal experience, I found that ad posts work better, but that's only if you do have a good business account. So if you've posted like 100 times and you have like 500 followers, then that looks a lot better than if you have zero posts and zero followers and no profile picture and stuff like that. In that case, you're gonna be a lot better going with a link in bio post. Once you do find a product that works, then your job is just to test it in all the ways that you can. That means testing bigger influencers, different influencers, more ads, more ad copies, changing the prices of your products, just a ton of stuff. And then if it's working this well, then you're gonna find something that works this well once you have the right combination of all of those factors. If it's a really, really good product, then I would recommend that you build a store around it. You can either build a niche store or a one product store, but personally, I prefer niche stores because then you get to sell other related products. Now, once you're doing pretty well with Instagram influencers, I would actually recommend that you switch to Facebook. Now, you can still use Instagram influencers, but it kind of gets to be a pain when you have to schedule all those posts and deal with real people, stuff like that. So if you really want consistency, then Facebook is the way to go. And it's, Facebook is a lot easier once you already have data from Instagram. So if you have your Facebook pixel installed, what you need to do the second that you start your store, again, install your Facebook pixel, guys, then... Um, <laughs> you're gonna be able to create lookalike audiences once you have around 150 sales. So those lookalike audiences basically allow you to go to Facebook and immediately find the most effective audience possible, which is just, it's so huge that I can't even describe it in words. Okay, so moving on to Facebook. Facebook is a bit harder than Instagram and that's fine if you have money to blow, but if you do not, then Instagram is the way to go. However, if you are a beginner on Facebook, then I'm gonna be sharing the things that work best for me that you need to know. So when you're running Facebook ads, it can be really tempting to just kill an ad as soon as it spends like $5 without a sale, but that's not what you need to do because you need to give Facebook time to learn. So I highly recommend that you spend $20 per ad set before killing it. So when testing, single interests seem to do best for me. And between one and five million seems to be my sweet spot, but I recommend that you test smaller and bigger audiences. However, personally, I wouldn't really go over 10 million and I wouldn't really go under 100,000. So I almost always run $8 budgets. I'm not really sure why, but $8 just seems to do better than $10. It just seems to do better than $5. But again, that's just me. But I would recommend that you start out with $8 budgets. Now, like I said before, lookalike audiences are extremely powerful. So once you build the original data and you're able to create lookalike audiences, then that is where you're really going to cash in with Facebook ads. Now, another strategy that you can use so that you don't have to spend an obnoxiously large amount of money to get data is you can actually run a video view um, campaign. And basically that means that you show your video to a bunch of people from like India and like just all these third world countries. And then that's super, super cheap, uh, like 50 to $100, something like that. And then you get a ton of video views. 
then you can make a lookalike audience from those views that's narrowed down to the people that watch 95% or more of your video. That means you're only targeting the people that are most interested in the product that you are selling. That way you can make a lookalike audience after spending only about $100 and it's pretty powerful too. Now I know that's not very beginner friendly, but if you're doing Facebook, then these are just some things that you need to know. All right, so when you're starting out with your ads, I would recommend that you just target the US. Now, I would recommend that you also test the big five, which is US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. And if those are doing well, then you can expand to different countries. But I really would not recommend starting out with e-packet countries or all countries worldwide. None of that. Just start out with the United States and test the big five. Okay, so when you're making a Facebook ad, Facebook is automatically going to select all of their placements. Placements just mean where your ad is shown. Now, I really, 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 really recommend that you don't take Facebook's advice and show your ad everywhere because they're just going to waste your money. For me, Instagram and Facebook ads always work best and Instagram tends to do a bit better with the products that I sell. Okay, so this is a third time that I've said it, but testing is key, especially when it comes to Facebook ads. The people that test more, make more. The last piece of advice that I'm gonna give you when it comes to Facebook ads is just to not get overwhelmed. I remember the first time that I looked at like the ads manager, and there were all these tabs and all these options and all these things that you could do, and it looked like I was like just looking at a foreign language basically but you really don't need to get overwhelmed. Just learn what you need to do. You're not gonna use 90% of the features on Facebook, so don't even worry about them. Okay, so just some advice when it comes to your website. Um, the reason this says traffic but no sales is because a lot of beginners complain that they'll get like 100 visitors or 200 visitors or whatever, and then they will buy anything. Now granted, that could just be you're getting unlucky, but it could also be that there's something wrong with your website. So in this slide, we're gonna be talking about some things that your website needs to have. Now, number one is your website needs to look professional, clean, and trustworthy. Like I said before, a basic website is more than okay, but it really does need to have some elements that create trust and just make you look like an actual company. Another thing your website needs to have is a clear call to action button. That essentially means that your add to cart button stands out. For me, I always do red add to cart buttons if it goes with the theme of my website. Another thing your website needs to have is professional photography. Do not, do not, do not leave an AliExpress watermark on your website. That is a big no-no. So I really recommend that your photos all have white backgrounds and um, just no or little text and just overall look like they would if it was a big company selling the same product. You also need to make your website seem branded. That doesn't mean that you need to have an actual brand, but a good logo and a consistent color scheme goes a long way. Also, you need to have reviews on your products. It adds so much social proof and so much trust. For me, Photo reviews do amazing. So I use Looks and there's a bunch of other photo review apps out there that are free. Looks is not. Another thing you should do is make sure your prices aren't too high. That can be a factor that causes customers not to check out. Now, I would really just recommend that you look at your competitors and see what their prices are and chances are that their prices are fine and you can just have the exact same price. Your website also needs to have clear policies. That means you need to have a clear return policy, a clear refund policy, and all these other things that customers look for. You also need to have a contact us tab, a frequently asked questions tab, and a track your order tab. One of the biggest things your website needs to have is easy to read and effective product descriptions. I made a video about this, I would highly recommend you check out, as well as almost all of these things that I'm talking about, but um, product descriptions are huge, and that's really what causes customers to go from a potential buyer to a buyer. If you're getting a ton of traffic but no sales, then you need to check where your traffic is coming from. You can look at the analytics tab to see the top five countries that your traffic is from. Traffic just means website visitors, for those of you that don't know. So if your traffic is mainly from India and non-English speaking countries, then it's not a problem with your website, but a problem with your advertisements. 
Another thing that you can do is install an app called Lucky Orange, which basically tracks all of your customers' visits to your website. And you can literally go through and watch videos of your customers scrolling through your website and see where they left. That's really effective to find patterns and fix stuff in your website. Like I said earlier, you can just have the default theme that Shopify gives you. That's called debut and it is my highest converting theme and I've spent well over $500 on themes. Okay, so my Shopify dropshipping strategy in a nutshell is A, starting with Instagram influencers. B, building a store around the winner that I find with Instagram influencers. C, running Facebook ads and Instagram influencers simultaneously to get a ton of sales. D, expanding your store to sell other related products and upselling current customers on those related products. E, building a brand so that you can sell your company. That means having faster shipping, a better order experience, and more. And then my favorite, which I have not done yet, but I will do soon and I'm looking forward to it, is selling your brand for a whole lot of money. That is how you go from drop shipping crappy products on AliExpress to just being like this guy down here and rolling in cash. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I appreciate you sticking to the end. Be sure to hit that bigger subscribe button below if you took some value out of this video. And don't forget if you are going to start your Shopify store then you can use the link in the description of this video to get a free 14 day trial. It helps me out, it helps you out, it's a no brainer. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.